What's going on everyone and welcome back to a very special video as part of Horror Month. Now I spoiled it last week when I talked about um, uh, in my Dracula review so why heck not. Um, I'm going to do something I've never done and that is I'm going to rank some of the best at, uh, Dracula performer, performances out there. So, And there was a lot when it came to researching this this list. So uh, yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm just going to focus on film and television. Nothing else, okay? So... With that in mind, let's cop into it. Um, but before I get into the main stuff, I want to give two honorable mentions. One honorable mention will be Christian Carmaggio, who uh, from Penny Dreadful, because apparently I did not realize that Dracula was included in Penny Dreadful. So apparently, it was a big unexpected twist. And possible future review um, I might do for you know, Horror Month. So I might I might talk about it. Who knows? But yeah, good. I did not realize realize that this character was in there. And he does a good job here. Like, it's like interesting, sinister, but suave character. Uh, but you get my point. And then, there, then Car another honorable mention is Carlos Falleras. You don't know who he is. He played Dracula back in 1931. It was the Spanish cast of, of Dracula. They were doing it at the same time. It's like, okay, yeah, the English cast with Bela Lugosi. They had the Spanish cast with the Carlos Falleras. And like, I don't know. I don't know. There's something about him that just says, okay, he's there. But to me, I feel like there's a whole bunch more that I think are are more superior, in my opinion, to, uh, than uh, Valeris. Excuse me. All right, so with that in mind, let's get down to the list. I'm going to try to get through this as quick as possible. Coming number 10, Jack Pounds. Yeah, did, bet you guys didn't know about this one. There was a This one came out in the 70s. It was directed by Dan Curtis. It was made for TV movie. And Pounds uh, played Dracula. And, and and when I was first saw this, I thought, oh my goodness. I thought it was a very bad Bale Ghosty cosplay. But as you watch the movie, he slowly morphs into into the villain that we all know and love. And of course, interesting enough, there is a Vlad, Vlad the Templar, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler connection in this in this movie. So I kind of feel like, hmm, between this and eventually Coppola, I feel like there, I think this one was the inspiration for Coppola's uh, version. So I don't know, interesting connection there. But you, but I'd say give this movie a watch. You'll be impressed, like 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 how well well all this stuff is. But to me, like Jack Palance. He's 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 something and something to behold. Like and this is a classic actor from a classic age. You know, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Come come in at number nine is another classic actor from that age, Louis Jourdain. And if that name doesn't ring any bell, bell, but uh, for, for all you Bond fans, he was Kamal Khan in Octopussy. Yeah. So before Octopussy, he starred in uh, in this BBC uh, seventy seven version. Was made for TV as usual, and he and he played Dracula. And believe it or not. This version of Dracula is considered by some to be the most accurate portrayal of the book. And, well, well, as the story goes, but when it came to Dracula, not, not as much. But, uh, but he does, but he's one of those classically trained actors that brings the characters to life, life in, in an interesting way. Um, but, yeah, it's something, it's something you can probably sink your teeth in, no pun intended. But you could definitely check it out and you can see, like, this classically trained actor, like, like I, I just say, see, like, like, give some kind of interesting twist and depth to his portrayal, and like, it works. You gotta see it for yourself. If you can find the BC seventy seven version, go luck. You, you might enjoy. Enjoy. It was hard for me to find, but you might enjoy it too. Coming at number eight will be is Frank Langella from the from the seventy nine remake of uh, Dracula, the Universal remake, and yeah. Um, there was, but when it came to Langella, his how I say this, so like if. If uh, Bale Gosey made him a horror icon, Langella kind of made him more like the sex symbol, of course, if that makes sense. Because around this time, you know, people were lo looking at Dracula as m more like, oh my goodness, goodness, Dracula looks amazing. Like, he looks sexy, that kind of thing. Uh, and, like, there was just something about it. And, and yeah, despite the 77 version being, like, a little lacking when it came to creativity, especially, when, or the story, Dory Langella was definitely the glue that held it together. And, like, uh, I don't know. And Langella is, once again, one of those in actors from a bygone age, and he's still going strong. And, like, this is the same guy that played freaking Skeletor in the He-Man movie. Less said about that, the better. But, hell, Langella does... Does Britain does rock as uh, as Dracula in more ways than one? If you know what I mean. Coming at number seven, Luke Evans. Yeah, now I'm going. Now I'm breaking tradition. Now I'm going into Dracula Untold. So yeah, 
say what you want about about that movie. It's still a mixed bag. May give it time. Maybe that movie will grow on me. But something about Luke Evans kind of brings like a more vicious angle to Dracula. Like you can watch, and of course, once again, this the, the whole Dracula Untold kind of focuses more on the historical aspect more than the mythology. And to me, I feel like it's an interesting hybrid. But you could sl slowly see the transformation. Or as soon as that scene happens, you know, you know what I mean. When when Vlad eventually becomes the blood sucking vampire that we all know and love, and it really works. But yeah, there's just something sinister when it comes to Luke Evans' performance, and he do, and I think he did a good job. But may a repeat from watching or viewing, it might it might catch on to me, even though this was part of the so called failed uh, Dark Universe uh, series. Well, uh, originally that's what I was told, but you get my point. Coming in at number six. Graham McTavish. Yes, I've done it. I'm including Dracula from Castlevania. Because why? Because there's something about Graham McTavish's deliverance and, as, and voice that makes Dracula the vengeful and evil villain that we all know and love from, from the Castlevania game. Because, hey, there, okay, there's a whole bunch of elements from both Dracula 3 and Symphony of Night weird in this show and and, I, and I've gone on record and stated that I really enjoyed Castlevania the, the, well the first two scenes the third season is a mixed bag but you get my point but Graham McTavish does something with Dracula you've never d done he really makes him be the vengeful guy that you want to see you want to root for him you want him to get his, get his revenge you want him to own own his shit, but but what boils down to you see him just get and see him fight off his own son, and of course the Belmont Belmont himself, Trevor. So hey, nope, not not me, the other Belmont. <laughs> but you get my point. Coming at number five, Max Shrek. Yeah, from Nosferatu. Yeah, now we're going back to the silent era. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that that's saying something. I'm like, huh, interesting dynamic here. But hey, he can't beat the classics. Even though the silent era guys were definitely on a different level. But to me, like, Max Shrek was there and gone. It's like there was like a whole interesting mystery around him. And was explored in the movie in the Shadow of the Vampire, which I definitely recommend you go find it. It's a really good movie. Like, like how, like, there's just something about Max Shrek that made, made, the, made Dracula, or Orlock in this case, and, and since they didn't want to avoid a voice also, more interesting and more mysterious and Max Shrek like laid the groundwork for this character and and just in, in cinema in history and, and if that makes any sense sorry there my throat's starting to go but but I will say if you've never seen the, the classic Nosferatu movie you gotta give it a watch um like yeah there's not much I can say but Max Shrek is to me is is the true icon, and you can and like he's he's not Roger, he's the plate carrier, and you can and there's definitely similarities between this character and and Dracula, or like I said said this is the earliest version of Dracula that you would probably fall in love and watch again and again. Coming at number four, I'm probably gonna get a little flack for this. It's gonna be Klaus Bang. Yeah, despite all the shit I said about the show, but Klaus Bang was the silver lining in it all, and it was. Fun. It was ex it was terrifying. Even though the dark humor like making him a wise guy, guy was a little much. But I'm like, come on, he should be more sinister than that. But Klaus Bang really embodied this character and gave it an interesting twist. Um, even though I didn't like the the fact that they made Dracula buy, they really should have just stuck to the other stuff. But of course, I, if I go off on a political correctness rant, shoot me, right? But yeah, yeah. But I, I still think Klaus Bang is it does a good job. But there's still three, three more performers, performers that I think are pale and you know are far better than him. All right, coming at number three, Gary Oldman. Why the hell not? The AKA, AKA the be, the best modern day Dracula, in my opinion, because. I don't know what it is with the, Gary Owens. Like he really morphed with the movie, and the pe and like if how you like if you look at the movie from beginning to end, it's like you could sit, see like a big transformation. The as you know, the, just like the story, like like Gary Oldman is definitely is shows why he's a chameleon and how he can morph and change with a character throughout the progression of a, of a movie. And he does a damn fine job, even though his even though it's a little bit more exaggerated. But it's entertaining nonetheless. And I definitely say if you've never seen the Coppola version, give it a watch. Even though even though there are moments that make you just make your blood scream or, or like make you go, okay, that's a little excessive. But there are moments of brilliance throughout this movie. Give it a watch, folks. Coming at number two, Bela Gosi. Why the hell not? The most famous horror icon of them all. Because 
quite frankly, he's the to me, he was the universal poster child of the day. And like his delivery really works. It's how how he's portrayed. And like even though the even though the, this the, the verse, Dra universal Dracula didn't didn't follow the book exactly, but it was still a very fine Dracula movie nonetheless. And th th and th to me, there's no one no one better better than Bela Lugosi. And of course, coming at the number one, it's obviously it, it's freaking Christopher Lee. Come on, Christopher Lee. He is one of my personal favorite actors. And believe it or not, he has played Dracula more times than ever. Ever besides playing besides doing the Hammer of Dracula, he played Dracula in the 1970 Jews Jess Franco version. Sorry, sorry there. And believe it or not. That was the most accurate depiction of Dracula. He ran the book. He was portrayed as an old man with a mustache, and and Dracula and his performance really shined like a diamond in that movie. And like it was no, it was no longer cookie or over the top, but it really worked. And can watch and can really enjoy this movie. And even though it's it's a very hard to find movie, it's it's an interesting thing. It's like it's a German, Italian, Spanish production with with some with some English actors in it. But you get the point. And, and to me, it's a fine movie, but there's far superior versions of Dracula than ever. But Christopher Lee is the most iconic because he is is the guy that really, even though he hated the character, but he brought something into it that made it more mysterious and more entertaining to watch. All right. So yeah, those are my rankings. I want to hear yours. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. If you get a chance, go find these movies. All right. That does for this week. Thumbs up for you. Subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for some more awesome and exciting videos.